Hi there, this is Ranjit and in this video, let's discuss about some of the pointers that you should look when you're buying a new smartphone. These days, a lot of new smartphones keep launching and it can be a little bit confusing, but here I'm going to give you some basic pointers that you should look at when you're buying a smartphone. And this is applicable to uh, anyone. For example, I'll talk specifically if it's a budget phone, what you need to look at mid range or on the premium end. And uh, uh, let's go on uh, over it. I divided in 10 broad points. So let's start first with the processor. And the good thing is uh, now that in 2020, if you buy any smartphone, generally the processors on them are actually so good that uh, it's not going to be like very laggy or something in a UI. Or if you click, uh, uh, what do you say, a small app like Twitter, etc., it'll take two, three seconds to load or something. So that is a good thing. But again, uh, if you're buying a new smartphone, even in the budget range, avoid the Snapdragon 4X lineup of chipsets. Some of the vendors, the lower end vendors are still offering some of the phones with Snapdragon 430, 439, etc. So avoid that. I would say here, the MediaTek's Helio chipsets are uh, the one to go for. Example, you can now find the Helio P70 uh, SoC even in what do you say phones around 7 8000. I feel that's actually a good uh, point. Avoid the Snapdragon uh, 4X lineup in that budget range. Now, if you talk about the mid range, which is again the most popular one in India, here I would say uh, now if you're getting, yeah, because generally some of the vendors release some phones with an aggressive price point, but they try to use a last generation processor. Here, if you're going, I would say go at least with the Snapdragon. Uh, 675 uh, the least i would say is the snapdragon 660 uh, if you're getting a very good deal on something but uh, mostly i would say for the mid-range uh, uh, the processor that uh, you should go will be the uh, snapdragon 7x series it can be anything uh, on the lower end 710 712 or uh, even the newer ones like the snapdragon 720g is actually very good i would say that's the best pick in terms of performance and power because it's very power efficient then if you do a lot of gaming and stuff then you can have the Snapdragon 730G also. And from the MediaTek, we have the uh, P90 and the uh, uh, G90T, etc. Those are also actually good uh, processors that you can get. Uh, and again, now on the flagship, and you know that with the Snapdragon, we have the Snapdragon 865 that you'll get. Uh, so that's what we have. And But uh, again, if you're going to take a Samsung mid-range smartphone, which is again pretty popular because it gets other things right. Uh, again, if it's a uh, Samsung one, most it will be uh, Exynos but make sure it is at least the Exynos 9611 because this one has at least a 10 nanometer process the earlier Exynos uh, ones I would not recommend now moving to storage which is again very important I would say minimum 32 GB even on uh, very budget oriented uh, smartphones it simply does not make any sense to go below that I would suggest at least 64 gigabytes which should be the minimum internal storage ideally I would say go with 128 gigabytes if you plan to use your phone for more than a year or so because many of the apps for example even your whatsapp data and heavy games etc will reside on your internal memory even if you have a micro SD card slot so I would say 128 gigabytes is the sweet spot but yeah you can get away with 64 32 is the bare bare minimum but I would lean over 64 if I were you and also in terms of storage yes you can't expect this in the ultra low budget but even in the mid range make sure it has that ufs uh, 2.1 storage uh, because many of the mid-range phones these days are coming with that 48 megapixel camera even some of them are coming with 64 megapixel camera and you need a storage that is fast to write if it's not fast if you click a photograph you'll see that circle again and again just rotating like that because the storage is simply not that fast to process it and again on the higher end variants you are getting the ufs 3 uh, 3.0 storage or even the ufs 3.1 so make sure it has generally if it's a flagship it'll have a ufs FS3.0 storage. Now coming to RAM, this is a controversial thing and I would say avoid even on the ultra budget range that is six seven thousand rupees phones avoid phones having two gigabytes of RAM because what we are noticing is that Android is giving getting heavier and heavier with every generation and many of the popular apps are actually getting heavier so they require a lot more RAM uh, so I would suggest uh, so phones having a minimum of three gigabytes of RAM, even if you're looking for a budget oriented smartphone in mid range, the minimum I would say is four gigabytes. But ideally, I would say go with six gigabytes of RAM because, again, as I've told you, many of the new phones are coming with that higher megapixel uh, 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 cameras like 64, uh, etc. And that extra RAM is actually required to process the images. Uh, so I would say mid range minimum, the bare minimum is four gigabytes. But ideally, I would lean towards that six gigabytes of RAM. And on 
lakh chips yes 8 gigabytes is more than enough i'm not in that uh, uh, what do you say mantra of having 12 gigabytes of ram right now you simply don't need that 12 gigabytes of ram but yeah many vendors on the spec list for high high end phones give you that anyways uh, now if you uh, move to another thing and this is important in india because i do get this question quite a bit what about 5g the phone that i'm buying uh, right now 5g again if you're buying a what do you say qualcomm snaps uh, dragons 865 based uh, smartphone that will have 5g because 5g comes with that i made a video about it why it happens but again i would say uh, as of now don't try to pay extra for a 5g smartphone because realistically in india we will not see 5g till 2023 or even by 2023 uh three now one year extension because of this lockdown and stuff nothing is happening so india is almost three years away right now for realistically 5g uh, deployment and by that time you're if you paid something extra just for that 5g that phone might get obsolete and right now the 5g modems that are being used are not that power efficient hopefully by next year we will get a lot of what you say the modems will become more power efficient that way i would say 5g is not a must right now and simply in india uh uh, it simply does not make any sense but yeah if you are an international traveler if you travel a lot to european and american countries then yes 5g makes sense but again it's just for india 5g simply does not make sense we will be getting some mid-range uh, smartphones in the future touting 5g and these companies will market it as as 5g ready 5g ready but again just use your brain a little bit and think will it be useful do we have 5g in india and when will be getting that Anyways, let, uh, let, let's now move to the important thing that is the screen. That's the most important thing about a smartphone. I won't talk about the screen sizes. Uh, these days, we simply are not getting those compact screen sizes phones. So we are hovering uh, anywhere about a six inch of screen size. And the thing is that because in earlier phones, we used to have thick bezels at the top and the bottom. These days, as you can see, the aspect ratio has changed. And so uh, the bezels are simply not there. That's why they're able to cram in a lot bigger screen. So these days, we are uh, seeing a screen size anywhere from about six inches inches on the smaller end to about uh, even 6.9 6.7 i would say uh, 6.7 is slightly bigger this is the redmi note 9 pro this has a 6.7 inch screen and definitely it's on the bigger side i would say comfortable size would be about 6.4 to 6.5 inches and now talking about the uh, screen technology here i would say uh, even in the ultra low budget range don't go with smartphones that give you a TNT, uh, what do you say, uh, TFT uh, LCD display. Because the pr problem with those is that viewing angles are so bad. If you look straight, it looks nice. But even if you tilt a little bit, it fades away and stuff. But luckily, uh, most of the vendors are not giving that. We will be getting an IPS LCD screen. Uh, and the good thing is uh, with the IPS LCD screen is that uh, uh, the viewing angles are good. The color reproduction is also good. So that's actually a nice thing. Uh, but again, look at the brightness level, how bright the panel can go this is in nets generally they specify 400 nets 450 nets 500 nets 550 nets the more expensive the phone the higher brightness it can go and the advantage of this is that in direct sunlight it is easily visible another thing is that how low the uh, phone brightness can go and this is also very important and many people forget to look at this for example at night uh, if you close all the lights and you are reading your phone because your spouse is sleeping you don't want to disturb many phones cannot go very low in brightness so that is also something you have to note uh, and, and now if you talk about AMOLED screens, yes, it's great. Sam many of the Samsung phones have AMOLED screen, even the mid-range phones have AMOLED screen. And you know the advantage of AMOLED screen, the great contrast and punchy colors. Uh, but again, beware uh, of AMOLED screens in, uh, what do you say, budget-oriented phones. Uh, because the thing is that uh, many times I've seen that uh, lower cost AMOLED screens are simply not that good. The color accuracy is very bad. And also if you tilt a little bit, the color shifts, you will see a greenish hue or a pinkish hue. For example, the Mi uh, A3, if I re uh, remember, had one of the very bad uh, screens, even Pixel had bad. So look at, uh, be a little bit critical with AMOLED screens, what you have. For example, in this aspect, the Realme's range, for example, if I recall the Realme uh, X uh, uh, actually had an AMOLED screen. Uh, those actually provided good AMOLED screen. So again, be a little bit careful when you're choosing an AMOLED screen. Also in AMOLED screen, this is very, very important. This is not only for budget oriented mid range phones, but even some of the higher end phones I've noticed that on an AMOLED screen, if you lower down the brightness to very low uh, levels, it starts to flicker. That should not happen. That will give you a headache if you use the phone at night a lot. So again, see 
what how does the display uh, behave if you just keep it on very low brightness it should not uh, what you say flicker uh, some of the new phones have dc dimming option if that is there that migrates but some of the higher end phones for example if i recall even the oneplus 7t uh, had that flickering issue so again be careful uh, with that generally uh, samsung has been good with their amoled screens i've noticed that they don't have this flickering issue but again if you're using an amoled screen check if uh, how does it behave in very low light uh, low uh, brightness uh, areas sorry the battery died on the camera uh, anyways now let's talk about the battery and here i would say uh, that uh, the mid range phones actually do much better than the flagships but ideally if i have to talk about one battery capacity i would say at least 4000 milliamp hour battery is a good start that should give uh, one day's typical usage to most of the users uh, out there again if you are a very heavy user we have a lot of smartphones 5000 and even about 6000 milliamp hour that we are getting now let's also talk about fast charging here on the ultra budget and we can't expect fast charging so you will get the 10 watt charger so it will take a little bit of time but now mid-range smartphones if you're buying a mid-range smartphone make sure uh, and check what type of fast charging does it support 15 watt or 18 watt uh, does it support qualcomm uh, quick charging standard or what is the standard that is supporting and if it's a slightly higher end smartphone then i would suggest that check what kind of charging does it have 25 watt 30 watt 40 watt 45 watt or uh, and even this is very important uh, if it's a high-end smartphone this is important does it support power delivery this is very important if it does power delivery then you can charge it uh, with your laptops usb type c charger or something like that in fact i made a dedicated video about this one i'll leave a link for your reference so check if it has power delivery uh, charging options uh, now talking about uh, the another thing is software update cycle again this differs from brand to brand so look at the history of that brand how good it is uh, with the past devices based on software updates does it provide updates quickly or not so again this is also something you have to note and generally what i've noticed is that again beware of some brands that launch too many devices because what can happen is that if they launch too many devices then the update cycle will definitely slow down so that is also something that you have to note but again you have to do, uh, do a little bit of googling and see if their older devices were getting software update regularly or not so this is also an important aspect about android updates many people talk to me about that realistically guys even on higher end uh, smartphones uh, we generally get just only two cycles of android uh, os updates uh, if you want more then switch to iphones now uh, talking about camera performance again here megapixel count is not everything and i'm also not a firm believer of having five different cameras at the back of your camera i would say if a ca smartphone is having multiple cameras three things that you have to look uh, uh, on it if it's on a higher end uh, make sure it has optical image stabilization it should have a regular camera it should have a good wide angle lens and a good telephoto that's a zoom lens these are the three things that it should have uh, and again if it's a higher megapixel again most of them will do pixel binning so again see how good is the uh, image processing how does it this is the big difference that i've noticed in the industry uh, both let's say a and b vendor are there both might have the same 64 megapixel camera sensor exactly the same but the images that you see at the output will be very different and that'll be due to how both these uh, firms do the after image processing so again that is also very important in the last one year i have noticed one one and a half years xiaomi has really improved their image processing earlier this used to be a lot garbage but again i've noticed that xiaomi also has a variation between one model to the other so again be careful uh, sometimes if they might launch two models uh, at the expense of one might have better image processing so again that is also important and you have to look at samples and stuff to see and how are the skin tones that are produced because if you just take static pictures of sceneries and stuff that buildings and stuff they will look nice because most of the smartphones have very good uh, resolutions these days but how does it process human subjects and stuff uh, if you take selfies how good are the selfies uh, how is the skin tones and stuff these are some things that you have to notice so again look for reviews with samples and stuff for that and now if we talk about uh, what do you say uh, front facing camera here i feel uh, have noticed that some uh, brands uh, example oppo and vivo put a lot of stress on the front facing camera so if you are a person who takes a lot of selfies then i feel the image processing uh, that oppo and vivo does are actually better than many of the ones for example in this area i feel samsung the higher end phones don't do uh, that well in the 
what do you say uh, selfie department now lastly this is regarding video recording don't get me wrong many of the smartphones do actually 4k video recording also that's common but the problem is that how is the quality of the video that is something uh, that is very important i would say the gold standard as of now is the video that we get from iphone generally the iphones do uh, good but some of the uh, new android phones are also doing good in video it's not just that 4k but what is the quality of the view for example i'm recording from this camera uh, but i'm recording it at 1080p but uh, the, the 1080p uh, recording quality is way better than any smartphone that can record in 4k so look at the quality of the video recording and also look at uh, if the device has optical image stabilization if it doesn't have many of the mid-range phones won't have that but make sure uh, does it have eis that is electronic image stabilization otherwise you simply cannot handle and shoot the video to be very shaky and also if you are a person who likes to do vlogging and stuff then make sure the front facing camera also supports eis that is electronic image stability otherwise if you shoot the video like this it will be very very shaky so these are some of the things that you need to look and apart from that that 4k or whatever look at the video and see how is the output do you like that picture quality how it's processing the images and everything as i've told you every brand has a specific uh, type of image uh, that they want to get with their image processing so that is also important apart from that you also have to look at some of the generic stuff again watch uh, different reviews for that for example how is the call quality that is the earpiece on the device generally i've found that most are good but sometimes some models the earpiece is not good how is the network reception uh, most of the phones do good in good network reception but how does it perform in uh, areas with no uh, low uh, network area does it get dis get disconnected a lot on stuff like that support for volte these days most of the phones will have but what about wi-fi calling with what networks do do that work how is the speaker phone quality because many times we take calls via speaker phone how is the fingerprint on it is it fast how is if it's in display fingerprint scanner is it fast or what how is the speaker quality and loudness so these are some of the things that you need to look when you're buying a new smartphone this is a generic overview but i hope uh, uh, looking at some of these points put it on the paper whenever you are looking for a new smartphone and see what are the criteria uh, that are very important to you get a check mark or not anyways guys that's it for now thanks for watching this is ranjit and if you guys are still not subscribed to my youtube channel hit that subscribe button anyways guys take care catch you later